hello and welcome so I've come out to the woods uh, this is a permission woodland and I've got Tink with me because it's summertime and she wanted to come camping I've been asked a few times in comments where she was and was she okay she's fine as you can see she's getting on a bit though she's eight years old now and uh, she's not as hardy as she once was so I don't take her out in the winter because uh, I don't think that's fair on her you know that she should suffer she's only got short hair so she's not very good at keeping warm when she was young and fit you know she was a, she was a lot better at it but now she's a mature dog she's a, she's a fair weather camper so it's summer it's not going to get below I don't know 12 14 degrees tonight but, uh, I've just got her on the lead for a minute she was off as we were coming in but uh, just as I got here there was two deer just uh, over there so uh, I'm just going to hold on to her for a little bit and um, give the deer a chance to escape it's been raining off and on for the last few days so I need to get shelter up soonish because there might be more rain coming later um, I've got a new tent stroke shelter to try out so I'll get that up in a minute just fiddle about with it and see how it works and then I've got steak for later and you know, we're going to sit by the fire and uh, just enjoy ourselves, aren't we, Tink? I hope you enjoy this video. Those of you that have been crying out for Tink to be in it. And um, hopefully she'll have a good time too. Anyway, enough talking, let's get on. Okay, so the tent I've got is the White Hills Backwards Bungalow. Um, seen a few of these around lately. I think One Tigris has a monopoly on backwards bungalows, but White Hills make one as well. And they were kind enough to send me one out to have a play with. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. I've not taken it out of the bag yet, so uh, yeah, we'll see. Let's hope it goes up okay, otherwise it could be a wet night. But it'd be a good test for it, because I say there is rain in the forecast, but there's also sunshine, so fingers crossed it's a nice evening. If not, I'll be huddled in my bungalow. There's two trees just in front of me there, and this bungalow has a porch bit that comes out. So I'm going to put it central to the two trees so I can just tie straight onto them with minimal fussing. But I just want to clear some of this sort of wet leaf matter off the ground because it's spiked spiky things in there and what have you so it's going to make a, a reasonable sized clear area worryingly it's a little bit windy tonight so uh, I have had a look above me it looks reasonably clear of uh, sort of dead limbs and all but never can be too sure so uh, crossed as I suspected you get the tent and you get the pegs you get no poles so uh, I bought trekking poles just in case for either side but then that front porch are either going to cut sticks or as I said I'll tie it to these two trees but we'll see as we go sure it'll be fine
yeah. It's not the easiest thing to put up when you first are trying, but now I've got the four corners and the edges down, I think we're fine. Yeah, it's a lovely colour. soil in these woods is so sandy that uh, it doesn't like pegs very really. But we'll persevere. So that's it mostly up. I'm going to bring this porch out as I said. And how stable that is. Only time will tell. It does feel a little bit dodgy. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine in the woods. I don't think I'd be taking it up any hills though. Right, let's sort out the uh, porch. I've got some bungees in my bag. I'm hoping the bungees will be sufficient. Well, it's pretty big inside, to be fair with it. And, uh, yeah, it feels like it could rain, so you're going to come and sit down with me, Tink. Just going to put my stuff in, and then I need to sort out some wood for tonight, because we're cooking on a fire. sort out what I need to sort out for a second and then we'll go and get on This is hard wood. I'm not going to cut loads up. It's good enough to get it going, and then I'll put big bits on and sort of just feed them in. But I need a few, you know, medium sized pieces to uh, just get things going. Edge of my shelter. I'm doing the fire about here, so it's far enough away. Not 
digging a massive pit just want to dig enough so that it's easy to cover the fire up tomorrow morning just to help you know keep it under control that's probably all I need The soil around here is sort of sandy, so there's no real risk of it spreading. The only risk is I get sand in my food. for the fire, let some air get under it. Go have another play with these. These are uh, fire plugs. And uh, they smell lovely. What have you seen, Tink? And uh, yeah, they're from uh, bigfootbushcraft.com. Uh, the guy there sent these out to me as a gift. So uh, I thought, while I'm in the woods, I might play with them a little bit. Yeah, come in a nice little tin. He sells ferro rods and things as well, but uh, yeah, he's, he's over in the States. So uh, check out bigfootbushcraft.com. All they are, these little plugs, is uh, kind of cotton wool soaked in something, and you just fluff them up a little bit, give them a wiggle, and they gradually, you know, puff up like that. Not much different to cotton wool balls, I suppose, but yeah, that's all they are. A lot of this wood is damp, so I'm going to give two of them a go. And they burn for ages, they've got a long burn time. And uh, yeah, they work really well, so hopefully I haven't got to do too much work tonight. I'll just put them in the middle. A lot of this wood is damp, it should be okay. around there and get some of these wet wet twigs and just leave them over the top and see if they catch nice right, sneezy Seems to have worked okay. sort of mounting this up in the fire Jenga style. In case the rains come, this should help just shield the, uh, the underneath of the fire. Put that there to dry. Should do us. I don't think that will go out. I reckon Tink. <laughs> oh, they've all missed you sitting in the way. Funny dog.
not really putting those bits on to burn, just drying them out a little bit for later. I'll move them in a minute because they're dry on the inside, they're just wet on the outside. So most of that is just dead full that I picked up off the ground or it was leaning somewhere. So um, yeah, it just needs a little bit of TLC to dry it out and it should be fine later. And I'm uh, contractually obligated to uh, show you my clothing. I was sent these clothes by Revolution Race. Uh, I got to pick two things off their website. And uh, yeah, I picked this, which is the, it's called the Campfire. And this is a uh, sort of flannel shirt. It's, uh, I like this actually, to be fair. It's got um, reinforced elbows. We've got two pockets. It's, it's a nice color. And it's uh, what they call it, it's like twice brushed cotton. Um, so it makes it fast drying. So it, it is ideal for, for what I'm doing. It's, uh, I don't think it's particularly warm, but it's, uh, it's a good summer shirt to keep the bugs off. And if I get a bit of rain and it gets wet, it'll dry quickly. So it does suit me and I do like it. And, uh, and my pants, my trousers. These are called the RVRC GP Pro Rescue Trousers. They have a stretch crutch. <laughs> and uh, these sort of bits are reinforced. Uh, there's knee pads that go in the knees. So they're, they're sort of wind and water repellent. And uh, yeah, you can impregnate them with heat wax, which I have done. And we've got, you know, ventilation in the legs for those uh, warmer days. There's a bit more ventilation down in the ankles. And they're kind of tight around the boot, which is nice, you know. Um, keep them uh, pesky uh, ticks out. And this Ricosar helicopter detector works all year round and it helps emergency services find people that are lost or injured in the wild. I've been wearing these trousers for a good month or so. And um, yeah, they are genuinely comfy. They're my size. They are, they do feel head hard wearing, like on the knees and stuff. It's much thicker material. It's like a double layer kind of canvasy material. But around the crotch area, it's nice and stretchy. And uh, yeah, that's a good thing. I do have a discount code. Um, if you are in the market for outdoor clothing and you like Revolution Race stuff, then uh, there is a link in the description and there's a code. I think it's Camp Life 15 and I think it gives you a 15% discount, which is not to be sniffed at. So. Um, yeah, if you are looking to buy something like these, then um, worth taking advantage of. Ah, oh. end of plug. Gonna get some dinner on. Half an onion, a couple of potatoes and a bit of garlic. I'm just slicing these potatoes quite thin so that they cook reasonably quick. And this is a little bit of sort of chili oil. spice in there just for good measure but I want to keep some for the steak Tink's just had her dinner now she's got some dog food and uh, no doubt she'll be begging for some of this later So keeping it nice and thin so that it cooks reasonably swiftly over the fire. That'll do. Some of these 
holes near the edge. Oh, I can't see. Put that in the ground on the edge. And I'm just going to leave it there for a bit. Standing up, sort of getting most of the heat. And in a bit I'll put it on top of the fire, but just want to cook it gently for a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's dinner on for the time being. Give that 45 minutes and then I'll cook a steak. In the meantime, I'm just going to chill for a bit. And um, I might make my bed up shortly, but uh, I just need to, just need a few minutes. It's now raining. It's raining pretty hard. I'm, uh, I'm glad I got that fire going nice and promptly. So uh, we're okay under here. The um, yeah, the fire will be fine because it's, it's, it's burning, you know, reasonably well. Good test to see if this thing's waterproof. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my bed set up. I think in a minute. Holy moly! It's really raining. Right, bedtime then. Not bedtime, setting up bedtime. Might be a mistake with a wet dog around. But you don't care, do you? She don't care. Alright, I've got the Trekology uh, Ultralight 140 mat today. And I'm having a bit of a lazy day. As you could tell by the way I lit the fire. So I bought the, uh, the tiny pump with me to inflate my mat because I just can't be bothered. Right. Yeah, the tiny pump attached to said mat. And away we go. Yeah, we got a pumpkin. Okay. I'm going to go in with the down blanket tonight as well. This is the one Tigris one that I've tested out a few times now and I've, I've got confidence in it for this kind of temperature and then pillow wise tonight um, normally I use an inflatable pillow but just doing an experiment on um, for my sort of coastal walk trip and I've got this, which is a kind of a long, thin dry bag. And I've put some clothes in here, not necessarily that I'll need tonight, but when I go on a multi-day trip, I'll obviously need a change of t-shirts and stuff. So I stuffed some clothes in here just to see what it's like. And it's long and thin. And that's gonna be my pillow. So for Tink, I've got her thermal coat. And I've got her a nice rug. It's quite a thick, decent sized rug from home. So I'm going to put that on the floor next to me so she can curl up in it. She'll have her coat on for warmth. And that should be all. I haven't bought her sleeping bag tonight. But, uh, you know, if I fold this over twice, you can see it's quite thick. So I think that'll do nicely for her. And she'll curl up on that. I'll either put her coat on, if I don't put her coat on her, then I'll, um, I'll put it in between the, the two layers of that just for a bit more padding.
Come on. Come on, Muppet. Here you come. Get yourself dry. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah. Okay. This tent, it is waterproof, but it seems to have developed a little puddle, which is probably due to how I've hung it. If I lowered this front down, see I've got, I've got the front sort of angled out that way. If I lowered it down, then the water would run off the front, which I might do for tonight. In fact, I will do that for tonight. But for now, I wanted to be able to see out Thankfully, we come round the back because we've got this extra sort of area here and then you've got this separate runoff bit at the bottom. You know, that's going to channel the water away. And it also there's a little air vent under there as well. So it's quite well set up in that sense. But because you set it up how you want it, you know, there's room there for errors. And obviously I've made an error in that you know the front is higher and I thought maybe the water would then all just run off the back but because it's on trekking poles and it's a little bit saggy in the middle you know that you get that puddle build up I think you can tie off a ridge line for it which maybe would have been a better idea and perhaps you know in the future that's what I'll do but this was a first go and an experiment and um, yeah other than that puddle building up on the roof it's doing okay. I say, I mean, you look at the angle I've put that on, it's a natural bowl, isn't it? So I think later on I'm just going to lower that front down. I mean, you can zip it right up shut and then it's just a little traditional tent shape, but I do like to see out. So maybe I'll, I'll just lower them down a foot or so and then zip up the edges just so it brings it sort of, you know, slightly closed, half closed if you will. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not disliking it. I think it's okay. It just looks a bit saggy, like me. Right, whoa, I've had one beer and um, yeah, I feel a little bit wobbly. <laughs> Yes, so I'm going to give the um, potatoes another few minutes and just have myself another beer. I've got three beers with me, I think. I might have four, but I think I packed three. So I had one. Um, I'm going to have another one now and then I'll save the other one for later. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll cook a steak in a little bit. But I just want to give those potatoes every chance to be done. What's this one? Beaver Town Neck Oil. Salute. Well, it's sort of stopped raining. So I think I'm going to take this opportunity cook my steak. I think it's about half a seven now. And uh, yeah, I think now is the time because if it kicks off raining again, I don't really want to be out here cooking in it. And once I've eaten, I don't care. I can just retire to my bed and uh, watch YouTube videos of people camping. Flip this over onto um, onto these logs, and it was sizzling a bit. So uh, yeah, I just want to sort of try and brown the edges of the potatoes. But I've got a nice bed of coals there to cook my steak on. So I'm going to get on and do that. 
know if I need any implements. I don't have any implements with me. Let's take the bark off this piece of wood. And then we're ready to go. One. Help me. Yeah, I just want to get like a, a pair of sort of, I don't know, oversized chopsticks, I suppose is the word. Because otherwise, I'm going to throw my steak on and I have no way to pick it up. That'll do. Right. I'm just going to knock these coals down. Careful with that bit. That's my cooking area. And if you've not cooked a steak on the coals, before, seriously, you don't know what you're missing. It is very tasty. Just got to avoid getting any dirt on it. So, bashing up the coals, and take something like a sit pad and just waft off any sort of ash. Ash Outdoors UK, and uh, you know, that's a perfect charcoal grill now. Right. And then in here, my bit of grease proof. Uh, you come calling, have you? That is a uh, piece of ribeye, which I don't really want to touch with my bare hands, so that is going straight on them coals like that. And then the steak spice. Just go on top, like so. Oh, that is hot. And I'm just going to give that, I don't know, three minutes on each side, something like that. I like it medium rare. So, um, yeah, I just let that sizzle for a minute or so. And then I've got my, uh, my turning tongs and a chopping board to put it on when it's done. Somewhere I've got a spork to eat my potatoes, but I don't know where. Better find that while that's cooking. And then very carefully. Oh, that's hot. Very carefully, just flip it over. It doesn't matter if all these bits are stuck on there, because they just come off, you know, nice and easy. And a bit of charcoal is actually good for you, in my mind. Give that two minutes on that side, and then we'll take it off and let it rest. Give that another flip. Wow, that's hot. I think it's still raining. I can still hear raindrops, but the canopy's quite thick above me. And I don't think they're quite getting through, unless what I can hear is just dripping, which is possible. Yeah, I think that is the case. I think it has stopped. But um, yeah, it could start again at any minute, so I'm glad I'm getting this done now. Let's get this off. I'll just flip it over once more. But yeah, look at that. It's nice and clean now. Those, when you put these on, the first layer always sticks to it. I guess it's because the meat's raw and it sticks to it easier. But the second side seems to always come out nice and clean. Yeah, I'd say that's done. Wait, oh, I dropped it. It hit the sand, there's gonna be a crunchy end. You might be getting some some steak tink. Right. So just knock all the bits of charcoal off. Pretty good to me. But I'm going to check the potatoes first while the steak has a little rest. Yeah, they look okay. It's hot on my leg. Check them out. Don't they look pretty? 
scoldingly hot. Oh, God, I'm burning my leg. Yeah. Now, just about done. I'm going to leave them shut and let the steam just finish cooking them. They are done, but they're gnats hair crunchy. Mmm. Steak's good though. Good aeroplane. Oh, I think I'm camping with you for ages. Look at how close you get. Right, let's cut the steak. Oh, that's actually perfect. Just gonna cut it into strips so I can pick it up. Use my hands. Mmm. That's pretty good. I think this is the sandy end though, it's a bit gritty. Yum. Can I help you with something? Mmm. Yep. That's good. Yeah, I'm gonna switch you off and eat in peace and um, we'll catch up later. Alright. Now she gives me kisses. That was really, really nice. I haven't had a steak in the woods for quite some time. A bit of a disaster though, when uh, Tink was <laughs> desperate for her share of the food. She knocked my blooming beer over. So, uh, well, we're a beer down, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Clean my board because I might need this in the morning. I don't really want meat juices on it in my tent of Tink sniffing it out. That will do. She does like a bottle of water. It's been said before, why don't you bring a bowl? The answer is she won't drink out of it and she'll knock it over. She knows what a bottle is, and she's quite happy to drink out of one. So I always bring her her own one. And that is the last of my wood for the night. I can't be bothered to cut anymore. But while I've got some heat, I'm going to put some pudding on. Okay, so it's got some water in my zebra pot. And this is a chocolate fondant. And I'm just going to pop that in the water and it just about floats. So I'm gonna put that in the fire, I think, until it boils, and then I'm just gonna take it out and leave it in the warm water, and uh, hopefully I'll have a lovely chocolate pudding later, or I'll have a load of burnt plastic in a zebra pot, one or the other. And then as soon as that boils, I'll just pull it off to the side.
It's about uh, 10 o'clock and uh, yeah, we're hitting the hay. Stick my head torch on. Um, <sighs> yes, we're, uh, we're heading to bed. I'm gonna put my uh, audio book on and put the lights out and get my head down. But, uh, yeah, this, um, this back, backwards bungalow is um, it's quite roomy really for a for a man and his dog. I mean for one person on their own, loads of room. And I expect you'd probably get two in here at a push, but definitely a couple. I tried lowering that front down, but it just still looked like it, it was a bowl, so I've hired them right up so the front is now at this angle. Um, so I can see out the bug net, I can still see the fire. It's just down to a few coals through that netting. Um, so that's something nice to look at for five minutes, but yes, I am uh, going to sleep. See you in the morning. Good night. <sighs> Good morning. It is quarter past six. And uh, yeah, slept okay. I went to bed at it wasn't ten o'clock. It was quarter to ten. I went to bed, and um, it's probably asleep by half ten. And uh, got up once in the night for a wee. Other than that, I've been okay. Oh, got woken up just a bit ago by a really loud deer bark right next to me. But, uh, he woke Tink up as well, she sat up with a jump. Yeah, this uh, backwards bungalow. It's okay, but there is an element of condensation to it. The ceiling has got condensation, whether that's because there's two of us in here. Heavy breathing through the night, I don't know. I'll definitely use it again. <sighs> it's quite convenient, you know, it's big. It's a lovely view in the morning, it must be said. You know, I woke up, opened my eyes and, you know, it's light out there. You can see through the trees and what have you. Yeah, it's very pleasant. It's tarping for the summer, essentially, because, you know, in the winter time and all, I'm quite happy under a tarp. Um, with no bugs, but this kind of summer weather, you do tend to get bitten, so, you know, it's tarping with the bug net, essentially. And it feels big, with that front bit open, and you're laying here, it feels like you're under a big shelter. So, it's nice. No complaints. Tink's quite liked it, she's... She's happy enough. I have a full bladder. I need to get up for a wee. So collect some twigs, I think. And, uh, just get a fire going. Small enough to just boil some water for coffee. Make up a bit of porridge. And then I'll let it go out. I don't need a lot of wood this morning, just little bits and pieces. Those are little round mushrooms on the floor. Those of you that know your mushrooms, I'm talking to you muddy paws. What are they? There's quite a few of them around here. I 
can't be bothered to build a pot hanger or anything. Hopefully that just wedging that pot in the side will be enough just to bring it to the boil. That's all I need. I'll do some cowboy coffee in there. Um, I've boiled enough water so I can make up some porridge and a drink thing. And then, then I'll stick coffee in the rest of it. Okay, that's us all cleared up. Time to go home. Someone is missing her brother. Um, yeah, that's where the fire was there. All buried, cleared up. I put all my excess water, milk, coffee, whatever on it. So it's all out. The soil's wet as well. And there's where I was sleeping. All tidy and I have left no trace. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this one. It was really enjoyable. Nice and chilled. Just a couple of beers. No hangover. So uh, yeah. And I've still got a full day ahead of me because it's only half past eight. Um, yeah, so I'm going to head home and uh, do something with the kids. But uh, yeah, if you could give the video a thumbs up, that'd be great. If you enjoy the content, subscribe, that'd be great. Um, nothing else to say. Thanks again. See you later.